Good morning, YouTube. Today is the day of the Fangtooth 25.04.0 release. So I'm gonna show you right now on my actual production ser server, my TrueNOS machine, how to go about doing this update, going through some of the new things, and some definite trouble spots that you're gonna to wanna to watch out for if you are upgrading the way that I am. So first I'm gonna show you, this is my production box, and I wanna show you something very specific here. I'm gonna show you two areas. One is the apps page, and you can see all my apps are up here and running right now, except for TDAR, I have that turned off. And virtualization, I have a Proxmox backup server running, uh, starting at boot, that's just a VM running Proxmox backup server and using this data set over here, this PBS data set to save all of my Proxmox stuff. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna show you now how to do the update. If I come over to my dashboard and I scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see it says check for updates. I'm gonna to wanna to use and click this box right here. And I have a problem, I'm on the 24.10 release train, so it's showing as no updates available. The problem is I have not chosen the right train. I need to hit this drop down box right here and choose the Fangtooth train. If you don't see this box, there should be another uh, option here that says change trains. So that's what you wanna do. You wanna go ahead and switch update trains. Yes, I do. And it's gonna find the update right now. Okay, now I see the updates. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is apply the pending update. I absolutely wanna save my exported seed, save configuration, I'm gonna save it right to my downloads, and I'm gonna apply the pending update, just like that. And we're gonna come back after this whole process is done. We're gonna do a quick tour of TrueNOS Community Edition Fangtooth 25.04. And I'm gonna show you some of the quirks of updating that some people have already run into that you should watch out for in the event you are updating. Okay, we are back in our dashboard. As you can still see, some things are pegged all the way out because this is just starting up for the first time after the reboot. So we're gonna see all this stuff kind of come back down. I'm hoping you've watched so far up until this point some of my other Fangtooth videos. If not, I'm gonna go through the whole thing again, but if you haven't seen Fangtooth before, the big change is gonna be over here in the Instances tab. I'm gonna go to that in a second. I'm just gonna show you that basically everything else is the same between that uh, and electric eels. So when I go to my storage, you'll see my storage pools are here. Everything is gonna look the same there. My data sets are all still here. Everything is just the way I left it. My shares are all up and running. My data protection, everything's gonna stay pending because nothing's run yet, but it's okay. The network tab is up and going. All of my things are here. Here's my fun new um, bridge and interface that was created from Netbird. My instances, and here's the fun part of instances tab. You're gonna get this. This is basically saying that this is right now a beta use, essentially experimental. So everything in, in, in instances is experimental. And I'm going to get to why that's important in a minute. Uh, my apps, here we go. Everything is up and running just the way it was before. There is an update available for Netbird. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and wait on that until I'm done shooting this video. You'll see down here we've changed things now. It's called Community Edition. It's no longer called Scale anymore. And I'll get to that in the release notes later. Uh, the one thing I want to talk about is a few caveats about updating. So um, one thing that's gonna happen is if you guys had virtual machines before, you probably don't see them now. Uh, the reason for that is there is no compatibility between virtual machines in Electric Eel and in Fangtooth. Now there's an upgrade guide that I'm gonna show you in a minute in, in the show notes, but here's the thing with that. If you were running a Windows VM before, chances are you're using legacy BIOS to make sure it booted. In fact, I've never seen, been able to install a Windows VM without legacy BIOS, and there is no legacy BIOS support in the new TrueNOS Fangtooth. So what am I telling you? If you had a VM before and it was using legacy BIOS, whether it be a Windows VM or a Linux VM, uh, you're not gonna be able to recreate that here. So just be aware of that. If you had previous VMs, upgrading is not gonna be for you yet. Just wait a little while longer until they kind of iron out the instances. Otherwise you're straight up gonna lose your VMs. Um, the other thing that's really cool about this is the availability to do instances, uh, LXCs in this case. So we're gonna go over here and we're gonna select our pool just to get this up and going. I'm gonna put this in my apps pool. And I'm gonna not do an automatic bridge. I have a bridge already made. I'm gonna, I wanna use the one that I've already made so that all the IP addresses work. There we go. All right, so if I was gonna create a new instance, this is really cool. If I use a container, I can browse the catalog and there's all these really cool container images. And if I wanna do a VM, same deal. I can use an ISO that's already here. Um, again, if I select a volume, remember before I showed you how to Proxmox um, virtual machine running, if I were to try and select that volume, uh, it's not gonna work. So let's go ahead and show you guys the few more caveats that I want you to be aware of. So in the event that you had um, a virtual machine that you needed and now you can't get to anymore, what I want you to do is come over here to system and then boot. 
Now you'll see here, right now I'm booting to 2504.0. If I had a VM and I needed to go backwards, what I want you to do is I want you to click this little check here that says activate, and then I want you to reboot your server. And that's gonna put you back to 24.10.2.1 electric eel or whatever previous version you had, and you'll be able to start your VMs back up again. Here's why I want you to pay very close attention before you do that. You see this little warning up here? I've got two warnings here. It says new ZFS feature flags are available. Let's go over to my storage. In order to get those warnings to go away, I have to upgrade these pools using this blue button to the new ZFS file system version. I do not want you to do that in the event that you think you may have to revert. In fact, I don't want you to do that for probably two weeks to a month, and here's why. One, you're probably not gonna be using the new ZFS version uh, upgrades that they made. And two, if you upgrade these, you will not be able to do what I just showed you. When, you, when I just went over here to boot and I said, just click this and you'll go back to the old one. Yeah, that doesn't work if you upgrade your boot pools or any pools for that matter. You will lose the availability to access the data on them once you update the ZFS file system that it runs on. So do not update your ZFS pools using these blue buttons until you are absolutely sure you do not have to go back to a previous version of TrueNOS and everything is working for you. Wait a little while. You're not missing anything. Nothing's going to break, even though it shows it as this kind of warning right here. It's just a notice. It's nothing wrong with your pools. There's nothing wrong with your server. Just leave it like it is for a little while until it works. There's only one more other cool thing that happened here. The fact that the dashboard got this really if you haven't seen my other videos, got these really cool things. Now we can add these widgets for apps. And that's probably the only other thing on this that I thought was cool. So yeah, let me see, this is Dazzle. Let's do one for, um, let's do one for my tunnel. This is my Cloudflare tunnel. Let's save this right here. So here's a really cool app little thing that shows my tunnel. And right now it's still gathering a data usage, but this is just my Cloudflare tunnel that's up and running. You can use this for other things as well. I don't think I have any TrueNAS ops up and running. Oh, I do have scrutiny up and running. Let's use that for scrutiny then. So let's come back over to the dashboard and I'll show you guys how to edit this really fast. Let's configure this. Oh, that's cool. It brings me back to that. Let's come over here and configure and I'm going to edit this and I'm going to change this to scrutiny like that. And I'm going to save it and I'm going to click off and click back on again. There we go. So now we see memory usage and CPU usage. So that's a cool little way that you can add and change your dashboard. So besides the instances and the dashboard little app thing, there hasn't been a ton of changes. Let's go to the actual paperwork and look at the release notes and look at changes. This is really important. I know most people skip this part. Please don't skip this. So this is all the new features that are listed here for Fangtooth. So you'll see every single one of these um, bullet points here is a pretty cool one. The ZFS fast dedupe is cool in the event you're kind of on an enterprise level, but for those people that are doing it, it's really great. The API is now going to be static and of cross versions is going to make a lot of other developers happy. Um, the big change, of course, is instances. So new experimental instances, formerly virtualization. And this is the whole um, blurb here. It says don't upgrade yet uh, if you're using virtual machines because uh, it's definitely still in the experimental phase. Uh, this is the new release schedule. Um, they're going to release the next point version on May 20th. This is the upgrade notes right here. You guys can read that in your own time. API key stuff. Here's the big thing about manually migrating virtual machines. So here they're giving you manual migration instructions. And I'm going to go through these again just to make sure these actually don't work because I used them in RC1 and it didn't. But here's how you specifically, specifically go about doing that. You basically just need to import the old Z pool that the virtual machine was running on. But here are the instructions for that. You want to expand the manual migration and look at how to actually go about migrating VMs from 24.10 up into recreating them in 25.04. Uh, the TrueNAS apps, here's the big one. I know the other thing that people were waiting for was individual IPs per container, where say, for example, my, my TrueNAS is running on 1099.0.200, therefore all my Docker containers are 1099.0.200 colon something. We now have the ability to give an individual IP address within the subnet range to a Docker container. So for example, if I wanted to give my MB a different uh, doc, uh, IP address than 1099.0.200, I can do that. This way I can run multiple uh, Docker containers on this machine on the same port, which is really, really cool. Um, that won't be here until July. So the important thing about that is the June 1st cutoff date. If you're still running on Dragonfish and you want to eventually go to Electric Eel, you need to hurry it up before June 1st. After June 1st, you will not be able to uh, migrate your apps from Dragonfish to Electric uh, um, to electric eel. And then once, if you can't do that, you're never going to be able to get the fang tooth. You're going to have to delete all your apps and restart all over again. So before June 1st, if you're on any version prior to electric eel, um, you're going to need to go ahead and upgrade before then. So you can expand this and read more. And they're going to talk about application host IP binding is being added to the catalog starting here. 
So in sometime in July, I thought they had the date down here somewhere. Uh, I don't see it, but basically you need to upgrade your apps if you're still on the older version, the one before Electric Eel. And that's pretty much all the things here. The other thing I want to point out is if you're working on Core and you're watching this video, uh, you guys are about to end have an end of life. The next upgrade path for you guys is going to be all the way to Fang 2. Now, you can do kind of a small hop here to Electric Eel, but I don't see the point of doing that. If you're on a 13 point something for Core, you're going to want to go ahead and hop over with the ISO install to 25.04 because Core is being deprecated. So that's just a note for you guys. But I hope you guys go ahead and upgrade. I hope you guys have a great experience doing that. If you don't have any good experience, please let me know on Discord. Let me know what the specific problem is, and I'll see if I can try and help you out a little bit with that but please like and subscribe to this channel thank you guys so much for everybody that watches uh, if you want to say thank you to me personally please buy me a coffee